Pokemon Legends Arcus is in full bloom. Everybody's playing it right now and it has great, great ratings and feedback from everybody who has been enjoying this game, which is a brand new revolutionary take in Pokemon franchise entirely. And we really hope so that it's going to continue this formula in future generations. I hope so, because it's done, it's done it really, really well. This video is gonna be all about everything in post game for this game. There's actually quite a lot to it and quite a, brand, quite a lot of brand new stuff, stuff that we've never seen before as well. I'm gonna go through everything that you can do in post game. Let's get to it. As soon as you finish the main game, you're gonna wake up in your house with your arc phone beeping, and you're gonna get this seek out all Pokemon objective once again. That's kind of triggering you for the uh, the main story for the post game. But the first things you can actually do is to go to Alabaster Icelands and the Crimson Mirelands to get the objects or the special treasures, the clan treasures, from both the Diamond and the Pearl clans. And those treasures are pretty significant. If you've beaten the main game, you're gonna be able to use these treasures directly. You'll end up talking to the leaders and you'll end up having a little battle with them too. And they will in turn give you the Lustrous Globe and that's one. That's the one from the Pearl Clan, and of course the other one for the Diamond Clan, which are both objects for using to change the forms of Dialga and Palkia, and we're gonna showcase all of that right now. And <laughs> they look great. I mean, honestly, my little Palkia has never looked as fabulous as this. I think it's I think it's kind of funny that they lost the arms, <laughs> but there you go. And going to Adamant as well, the same thing, same business here. You'll have a little fight. You'll get the other orb from them. And that one is going to be for Dialga. So in this game, it does not matter which clan you choose in the story. That's only going to affect the order of which Pokemon you get first, which legendary you get first in the story. And again, which legendary you use the origin ball on in the end. So it does not matter either way. You will get both and you'll be able to get both forms for both Pokemon on just like this. Let's have a look at Dialga now. Bam. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Next up before you do the main post game story is you can do the Darkrai and the Shaman quests. If you have the save data for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, you'll be able to do Darkrai here, which we're about to do. You'll be able to pick up the quest like you saw off of the blackboard beside the professor in the galaxy building. And then you'll be able to come to the Coronet Highlands uh, following the markers and you'll encounter your Darkrai. Bam, there he is. Pretty cool little fight. It, the quests are not very long. I am skipping the kind of the movement stuff just to save time, uh, the boring stuff. But there you go, you'll get the chance to catch him and you'll complete the quest. Again, the shame and quest is the same thing, you'll find it on the blackboard. Talk to the first NPC in the first area, Obsidian Fieldlands, and she'll give you the Gracidia flowers which you can use to change his form. And then again, following the markers to this patch of grass, our dead flowers here, the whole event for this quest will play out. As you can see, Medi here trying to, I suppose, thank Shaman for something that he did a long, long time ago. And honestly, this is the entire reason the field is dead. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. But either way, just that belated thank you will restore it to full glory. Beautiful field of flowers. And we get our Shaman running at us. And the same thing again here, you'll go ahead and catch it and then you will end up completing the quest like before. So that's it, token of gratitude. Enjoy your Shaman. Okay, so next up is the real meat of the post game and that is following the main quest for the post game, which is gonna involve a lot of Volo here. You're gonna end up going around to different places with Volo and kind of deciphering some of the old ruins and different hieroglyphs and so on to bring you to a very strong end paint point. But you're basically, yeah, the objective is you're gonna be collecting all, this, all the extra plates that you haven't gotten yet. So if you were keeping track of all the Arceus plates that you've obtained, you will find that you haven't gotten them all. You'll find the stone plate as we just saw in a very, very random way at the very beginning. And then you'll end up finding this new mysterious character who will give you a bunch of quests, which also lead you to finding new plates plates. The only thing here is I highly highly recommend you try to do the snow point temple one last because you will need other plates that you're obtaining from the other quests to actually continue with the snow point temple. So do the other ones first. The other ones as you can see here and you can probably guess what's going on here you'll be able to catch yourselves a couple of legendaries again. You'll be able to catch the lake trio. You'll be able to catch uh, the volcano pokemon Heatran and you'll be able to catch Cresselia as well. So 
there's a bunch of these quests that you can just go on. They're not very long. The first quest, again, is one that doesn't involve one of the legendaries, and that's this one, going to Kamado on Prelude Beach, fighting him in a battle, and earning yourself the next play, the fist play. So that's the second play for the post game. Moving on to the third one here is going to be catching all three of the legendaries, or beating them, I think. Catching them is good enough, so just go ahead and catch them all, because of course you're going to want them for your decks either way, for something else that's in post-game at the end of this video. So once you've caught all of those, you'll get the Draco plate. I don't know why this, the plates just seem really, really random for this sometimes. Moving on to the next mission is the Fire Spit one. You can go up to the volcano in the Cobalt Coastlands and you'll have a couple of discussions here with the clan leaders and you'll be able to go in and dance with Heatran. It's a really, really tough battle. I mean, I guess it is. Um, trying to catch it without actually fighting it is the tough part, but I mean, you'll be able to pick up a bunch of balls of mud in there as well, which you can use to distract Heatran, and you just have to catch it with whatever, Ultra Balls and so on. So going on into the volcano, which is a new cavern that opens up in this quest, we'll be able to see our guy right there. Keep in mind, guys, these static encounters are not shinyable. They cannot become shiny, sadly, in this game. So upon catching them, you'll get the iron plate. There we go. Moving on to the next one, the Moonview Arena. That's going to be for Cresselia, obviously. And that will bring us to the Coronet Highlands once again. And we'll talk to this annoying person <laughs> and get to fight Cresselia, which again is a, it's not too bad actually, but you get to play around, dodge their attacks and all that stuff as well, and then end up catching it. So let's go ahead and talk to these guys once again. Just keep going through all the dialogue. I mean, there's a lot more that I've also cut out just to save time. Uh, on the video and not spoil everything, I guess. So let's go through all this dialogue. You can feel free to pause as you need to if you want to read all this stuff. They're actually talking about getting the lunar feathers, which I think is an interesting aspect because wait until you see what happens after. You actually don't get a lunar feather this time. Unlike in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl in the past games, you don't get a lunar feather, but you do get something else. <laughs> And you can guess what that is, considering the whole main quest of the post-game is obtaining plates, right? So go ahead and catch them, and you'll get the Dread Plate, interestingly enough, coming from Cresselia, the Dread Plate. And the last one I recommended to do is the Snowpoint Temple one. You go into Snowpoint Temple, and there is a new area that we were not able to access before, which is going down the stairs, and you'll come to this door. You may have seen it if you're exploring. And this door obviously looks very, very familiar. It looks like one of the Pokemon <laughs> that we're supposed to catch. And yes, that's exactly what it is. But to, an, to open it, you will need the plates that you've gotten in the postgame so far. And again, you'll talk to some of the Diamond guys here. Just going on with their story and having a little converse. They tell you a little bit about what's supposed to be going on behind the door, which you already can guess quite comfortably. So go ahead and go and open the door with your newfound plates. And it will tell you here too that you need certain plates. Stone, iron, and icicle plates you need for this. So there you go. You'll be able to open them op up with those plates. And the door opens and then you go down some stairs. Go ahead. I mean, I think the post game is really, really cool overall. And there he is. The next Pokemon that you can catch. And another one for your decks in order to get the shiny charm. You will, again, have to do all of these in order to get the shiny charm at the end. And you get the blank plate as well from him. There we go. And that's for the normal type. Brilliant. And go ahead and go back to this mysterious stranger. And once you've collected all those plates, you'll end up getting more. Okay, yes, more things to do. And now the best part of the post game comes after this. She actually strangely asks you for three logs, which <laughs> is really easy to come by. You'll probably have some in your inventory or in the, in the box, the storage box. So just grab three logs for her and she'll end up giving you something vital. If you have been counting carefully and you've been keeping track of all the plates, you'll know you are still missing one. But bam, she'll give you the pixie plate. That's right, just like that. And in fact, you're not only missing one, aren't you? You're missing another one too, if you have been keeping track, which I have not been. But there we go. Once you've done all that, guys, you're gonna come to the very, very end of the main quest, and that's gonna be 
your duel with Volo, which is really, really cool. It's basically this game's take on a Cynthia battle. He has almost her entire team with a slight change here and there, and you'll be able to see that when you fight him. But the battle is tricky. I'm not going to showcase it because it's damn hard, I'll tell you that. So make sure you are ready. And I'll tell you this much, a full team of level 70 legendaries isn't going to cut it, okay? So be prepared. You'll see his team and you'll be prepared. Because in fact, this is actually an eight V6 fight. Once you beat him, this is going to happen. You're gonna go straight in to a Giratina fight. And yes, you did hear me correctly. I said an eight V6. Wait until you see what happens. Now, this is by no means easy, guys. You will have to be prepared. You will have to have a strategy to try and win. You'll have to be careful and you'll have to level up. So, here we go. This is the Giratina fight. He manages to summon him. You beat Giratina once. And then, bam, it's a debate. He comes back again with his second form. And it's, again, another battle you have to go. And that's what I meant by... 8v6, so you'll definitely want to be prepared. After you've done that, you'll get the spooky plate, and that will finish off all the plates. There is, in fact, one new plate, however, in the game, which you'll be able to get later. Upon getting all the plates and beating the main part here, your flute will transform, and you can guess what that might be for. You do get the Azure Flute, and you get a new mission, the Deified Pokemon, and you can guess all that. But you have to do a lot of stuff first before you can continue with that quest. So upon heading back to the village, you're going to see this shadow dialogue in the Cobalt Coastlands, which means now you can go and catch Giratina. I guess this is kind of an extension to the main story, but actually this is really a side thing. So head over to the spring in the Cobalt Coastlands, uh, up the far north, and you'll be able to enter in here, and you'll be able to catch, fight and catch Giratina. Not only that, but you'll also get the item to be able to change its form. So here we go. The music's all really cool and everything as well for all of these fights. Once you catch him, guys, you, you can see me using Heatran there, which wasn't even good enough for my main fight with Volo. Uh, once you finish catching him here, you'll find the Grisius Core, which, was, which can be used to change his form. And I'll showcase that here. Go ahead to your key items. Use your Grisius core on Giratina and that will change his form to and fro whichever form you prefer and let's have a look at him bam there he is that's the form he changes to after you catch him because he's in his other form when you first fight him there so there you go next up guys going back into the galaxy building you're going to encounter Kogita again and this time you're going to have a brand new quest which is something that you did, probably didn't expect for a sort of a gen 4 setting and that is the encounter forces of history getting the genies the three genies now are quite difficult to catch but the first one can be found in Ramenas Island in the first area obsidian field lands and you'll see him floating around there with the tornadoes around them these guys can see you from miles you're definitely going to want to be careful the next one's over by the pincer horns in cobalt coastlands but keep in mind you will need stormy weather guys you will need stormy weather for this to spawn here and this is by far the hardest one to catch good luck folks good luck the next one's in Alabaster Icelands during Blizzard. You'll be able to find them in the big open area here beside the Alphas. And there's a lot of Pokemon. This is also kind of tricky. So good luck. Upon doing all that, guys, return to Kogita and talk to her once you've completed the deck's entries for the three genies. And you'll continue this quest. It's not over yet. But you'll have a bit of dialogue as usual. And uh, <laughs> here comes a brand new surprise. There's one more of that cohort. And she can just say, come. She just, she just summons it like that. And bam, you get a fourth brand new genie. My god. Nobody saw it coming unless you were keeping track of the leaks. And that is another one that you're going to have to catch. Not as hard as some of the other previous ones, however. But you'll be able to find it in the Crimson Mirelands right in the Scarlet Bog here. A little tricky because of all the Pokemon around, but not that bad in all fairness. So go ahead and catch that. Once you finish that entry as well, Enamorous' entry, you'll be able to come back and you'll be able to finish up this quest. You will get one more item from Kogita, 
And that item is going to be used to change all the genie's forms. Once you finish all your dialogue, we'll have a look at it. So keep talking to her and she'll give you the mirror. The reveal glass. Okay, that's close enough. There you go. Now, the new genie has a really wicked form. <laughs> One you probably didn't expect coming because it's not exactly the same. It doesn't follow the same pattern as the other three genies. But let's go ahead and use it on Enamorous. Now, keep in mind, you'll only be able to use it once on one genie at a time, guys. Okay, so one genie at a time. One new form at a time. And let's have a look. It's very strange. Very, very strange. But there you go. Enjoy your new genie. Next up, go back to the professor and you'll be able to grab the other two starters that you did not start with. This is another way to just get the starters. Of course, you probably know by now that you can actually get all of the starters in the time distortions in various areas and they can be shiny in the time distortions. However, these ones cannot be, but it's a nice free gift of just the new starters if you didn't manage to get them before. Finally, once you've completed the Pokédex, you will be able to continue with the final quest of the game. By completing the Pokédex, we mean just catching every Pokémon. For this quest, that's good enough. And this quest is the deified Pokémon, which of course you can guess is Arceus, alright? So obviously this game revolves around Arceus. Once you go back to Coronet Heightlands and talk to the Professor, once you finish your decks, you will have this dialogue, and you'll be able to move on with your quest at long last. And you can tell where you can go. The mission shows you where to go anyway. So don't worry about getting lost or anything like that. Of course, the hard part is just catching all the Pokemon. It's just a little time consuming, which you can do in your own time. So moving on, you go to the Temple of Sinnoh. You have your Azure Flute. And once you get there, you'll be able to play it right here. Investigate and you'll get to play your flute. And then the usual stuff will happen. Play the Azure Flute. The usual tunes. <laughs> and your stairway to heaven appears just like that. This is one of the coolest parts of the game as well. You will have to meet and fight Arceus up here, but the fight is similar to some of the fights you had during the main story, the pre-game, of course, the normal main game, uh, and you'll have to use a, an unlimited supply of items to wear down his health, dodging all of his attacks. Very Dark Souls style, but this is a quite a challenging one. It's a lot of fun, and uh, once you beat him, you will actually get Arceus. All right, so once you've beaten him, he will bestow upon you a part of himself, which is the brand new plate in the game, the Legend Plate. And apparently, this is a description, it gives the power Pokemon a power of every type there is, which is really interesting. So, the de deified Pokemon, very, very strong plate, give you super effective, or uh, the stab on everything. And moving on from that, guys, there's only one more thing in the post game that you can do that is exclusively to the post game. Of course, guys, I've excluded the things you can do before the post game. Keep that in mind. You can get 10 stars, for example, in the uh, before post game and all that. So I have excluded those. This is the ending of that part of the mission. And that's that. So, last thing, guys. And the last thing is going back to the Galaxy Building once you've finished level 10 on all your Pokedex entries. The Professor will give a new announcement. And the announcement is what you, is what you would expect. Your whole objective here for the Professor and for Team Galaxy was just finishing the Pokedex. It's finally complete. And you do get a very useful, very nice, cute little reward here for all of this hard work. And that reward is the shiny charm, guys. There we go. A lot of dialogue, as usual. 
But the shiny charm will add an extra roll to your ability to get a shiny Pokemon in the wild. By far the best way still is getting the, uh, the mass outbreaks. They have 26 chances for a Pokemon to be shiny. The Dex Complete is another role. The Dex Perfect is another role. And the Shiny Charm is another role on top of that. So if you get everything done here, that's gonna maximize your roll chances. Combining the Shiny Charm with everything, the completed Dex and all of that stuff, you're gonna have like a very, very high chance to get a Shiny. It's about one in a 140 or so chance to get a shiny combining it with the mass outbreaks so now you can spend all game shiny hunting and get very easy shinies here so enjoy that good luck and enjoy finishing off whatever else is left that's everything guys that is all of the post game for pokemon legends arceus hope you enjoy the game i hope that guide helps you and uh good luck and have fun with the post game because there's a lot to it especially finishing the decks and getting the shiny charm which will lead you into a really good shiny hunting opportunities thanks for watching this video as well do check out all my other legends arceus videos there are quite helpful guides out there as well as a couple of glitches here and there and they're coming more coming too and hopefully giveaways coming for this game too as well so if you guys are looking to get easy shinies for all the brand new Pokemon, we'll be able to do some of those uh, coming in the near future, guys. So stay tuned, drop a sub, and I'll see you guys around the next video. Till then, bye!